Hello, all you beautiful, lovely, gorgeous individuals out there to a special Talking Sam episode here on my channel, Sam and Sias. Now, this is not going to be an interview style or anything like that, but we're all going to be talking about movies. If you know me, I love movies. I have a couple posters behind me representing that. And with me today is one of the best YouTubers out there today. He is the one, he is the only representing his channel, Dark Cry. Diego, how are you doing, man? What's up, Sam? Well, that's a hell of an introduction. I don't know about best YouTubers, but <laughs> thank oh, you yeah, for you're, that. You're, on the, you're one. You're one of them. You're one of them. You're on the rise. You're <laughs> you're like a you're like a phoenix, man. <laughs> <laughs> Rising from the ashes. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So so excited to talk about uh, Oscar predictions with you, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. And just like Diego said, we're gonna be predicting the 2024 Oscar show, and this is this is a really interesting year. I think one of the better years for the Oscars, in my opinion. Uh, I am really interested to get in, in, into it with Diego. And just to give everyone out there, let you know, we won't go through all the categories because if we do, we'll be here just as long as the show might be. Probably three plus hours. And no one wants that. I know I know, we, we got pretty faces here, but we no one wants, it, wants that. Oh, this is Killers of the Flower Moon, but... Uh, hey, you know, true. Only Mars Christensen could direct that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is true. That is true. So we're gonna get it. we're gonna head into this, get into it right away with best editing, and let me pull up that category for best editing real quick. All right. So the nom nominees for best editing are Anatomy, Anatomy of the Fall, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Room. Oppenheimer and poor things. Uh, Diego, give me your thoughts real quick. Who do you see as the front runner out of this category here? That's Oppenheimer. I, th Oppenheimer. I think Oppenheimer is is the one that, I mean, usually there have been some cases in years before in which the best uh, editing award goes to to films that don't have too much editing on them. Like it's, mm -hmm. you, you've seen them like on, uh, not 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 also not only Oscars but also like BAFTAs or yeah or Golden Globes or critics like they also go to like one take movies for for example 1917 was one of them mm -hmm. but I think over here it's like that whole synch synchronization of the music and the acting and the shots and every like everything the visuals and the sound that really just made the movie what it is the juggernaut that it is and i think part of it is because of the editing i and i think you know that that's one aspect that i feel like is gonna be finally get recognized at the oscars mm -hmm. for christopher nolan movies because if there's something that um it's always a highlight in in his movies is the editing and i think what he what he told in the span of three hours that's an achievement. I think oh, yeah. he's a clear fun runner. Yeah. Absolutely. And what I just recently watched the movie, and one of the lines that Killian Murphy's character Oppenheimer said in that film was, listen to the music. And that yeah. is just so poignant into what he was able to edit in the film. I, I think it's one of the best sound editing films in a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Whether, if, whether if it's an op, uh, a Nolan-directed film or any other film, you cannot deny how beautifully sound especially in the one scene where they were uh testing the bomb in that in new mexico that i i'm not gonna kid i'm kidding you not man that blew me out of my seat the sound Same. out of nowhere coming out forget it yeah i think that's that's the most well, that's one of the best cinematic experiences i ever had not only oh, the movie but that scene itself because i also mm -hmm. saw i saw that scene in imx and everybody was on the edge of their seats yes and when they cut to the silence like everyone was silent oh and that yeah. is so rare and you could you could hear i th i'm i i watch it with some friends and this friend of mine was almost close to having a panic attack i'm not kidding it was <laughs> so surreal the experience no yes oh, no. I, um but he's fine no worries um okay that's the <laughs> The editing has to go to Oppenheimer. Has that? It's and it's been like winning in in every uh, aw yeah, awards every award ceremony. Show. Yeah. Yeah. So, film editing, we were gonna give that to Oppenheimer, and that's that. That's a no brainer. No brainer. 
up next, we're gonna st- we're gonna go on the ish- international side since our good friend Diego is international. We're gonna go to the international feature film, and the nominees are E. Capino from Italy. Apologies if I butcher some of these names, everybody. Io <laughs> Capitano. That's Io it. Capitano. Okay, there mm-hmm. it is. Io Capitano from Italy. Perfect Days from Japan. Society of the Snow from Spain. The Teacher's Lounge from Germany and the Zone of Interest from the UK. The Zone of Interest, the only one I, I've been paying attention to. Some of the other ones I haven't really. So obviously, I'm probably going to lean towards the Zone of Interest. That's been getting more of the attentions in the award circuit now. Uh, but what do you what do you say, Diego? Who do you got in this? I think the Zone of Interest is going to win. I mean, it's also nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. But I saw Society of the Snow. Oh, okay. Let us know. That is one of the best movies of the year, hands down. Mm. I think that should win. Oh, okay. That is it, my, it, I, yeah. It, it's it's not a it's not a crazy thing to say because we see movies nominated for both feature film and best picture, and now winning both awards. So that Society of the Snow, Society of the Snow could be, I guess you could say, a dark horse in that category. It could be an upset because a few weeks ago, actually. Um, at the like Spanish Oscars, let's say it's the it's the Goya mm. Awards. Oh, okay. that movie won twelve awards. It's the third. Really? Yes, it's the third wow. most awarded movie in that award ceremony ever. Mm. And that's I think below um, a movie from the nineties. I can't recall which. And another movie that also won fourteen that was with Javier Bardem. That was from the two thousands. I can't remember which, but it's been years since a okay. sweep that just overwhelming has been for a spanish movie and look i highly highly recommend that movie because it is just it's so emotionally powerful it's based on a true story and the production in that movie is i cannot believe that that movie was overlooked for the oscars because it's only nominated for two for international feature film and i think Mm -hmm. best makeup yeah best makeup and yeah, I, I think the zone of interest is gonna win because it's the one that has been with the most attention out of all these. Yeah. But I really wish the side of the snow could win. I, I if there's an upset, if one if there's one potential upset that I may see happening over here, it's the side of the snow. Like nice. that would be crazy. Yeah. You got now. You got me interested in Society of the Snow. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find that before the Oscars come out because I, I yeah I've been seeing a lot of Zone of Interest getting a lot. It has a lot of the nominations in the Oscars yeah. category. So now now you got now you got me thinking on Snow the Society of the Snow, man. Now you got me thinking. All right. Yes, I'm, I mean both both movies are phenomenal. I also saw the Zone oh. of Interest is also like very it's very dark, very. Mm-hmm. Um, it has that kind of like um, quality that you like. You 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 watch the movie and you appreciate it so much mm-hmm. that you cannot that I cannot see myself watching it again because it's just so ah. dark. The the, the the thematic it's it's very okay. similar to the way I felt about Schindler's List, for example. Yeah, that also that reminds me of the um, Jake Gyllenhaal Hugh Jackman movie of a. I forgot the name is escaping me, but it's about them trying to find a, a, a Hugh Jackman's daughter by a child putter, and they go all over the place. It's going crazy, and the movie is so hard to watch. It's prisoners, very, prisoners. Yes, yeah. I was thinking prisoners, but I couldn't. I wasn't sure if that was right, but man, that was a hard one to mm. watch again. That's from Denis Villeneuve. That's one of his best. I, I think that's yep. one of his best movies. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, hands down. That's Denis Villeneuve. That's one of his best movies, hands down. All right, so we, I think Diego, you are on the Society of the Snow Train. I'm gonna stick in the zone of interest just (laughs) because I don't have heard much on that. So that's that we're gonna stick on that right there. Up next, we're gonna go into the writing categories, both adapted and original. Let's stick with the adapted part part first. The nominees are American Fiction, Poor Things, Zone of Interest again, Oppenheimer, and the controversial part of this category, Barbie. And I understand why hmm. Barbie got put in the adaptive screenplay. But before we get into that, uh, what do you think, Diego? Who who's coming out on top? Because I obviously it's easy to say Oppenheimer, 
But if I got to give my dark horse win on this, it might be poor things. It might be poor, poor things. things. Yeah. Why? Why do you say that? I just thought the writing of that film was just so unique and clever. Uh, and it was just so, so out there, so new. It really got me like, oh, wow. Okay, this is this is interesting here. Like it, it, when movies gets me thinking like that, it gets me yeah. thinking about like a hey, like thinking just like in my box, and then gets me out of it. I was like, wow, okay. And Emma Stone just killed it in that role too. <sighs> Absolutely. Um, that's so interesting because out of these five, mm -hmm. my favorite script is Poor Things. It's hey. the it's the best script. I think mm -hmm. it's the best script of the year. It's the with the sharpest dialogue yeah and there's a lot of nuances to the to the lines of each character and mm -hmm. it's the structure was just so unique for a um comedy kind of movie because it is comedy yes so oh, yeah absolutely it's yeah it was i would love for poor things to win because mm -hmm. this is the category that i think um above production design and costume design that of course oh, yeah. like i'm also Polling for poor things to win, I would love for adapted screenplay to, to be for poor things. But I, the thing is that it hasn't won adapted screenplay in in televised yeah. ceremonies. Even I think I'm gonna go. I'm, I think I'm gonna be a kind of place a safe bet with American Fiction, which surprisingly mm. has won a lot of adapted screenplay awards. It has. It has. That one's been running away with a lot of them on the television side. Yeah. And you, I see your I see your point. I I do hope Poor Things does get this win yeah. because comedy comedy as a self, as a film category, does not get enough credit. I mm. love comedy. I'm a big big fan of comedy back in the days, and so seeing something like this getting recognition is great. Hopefully, it gets rec more recognition with the win. I don't know. Hopefully, but uh, let's talk a little bit about the Barbie nomination because that one really surprised me when it got adapted. Was it going to get a, a, a nomination for writing? Absolutely. That movie was insanely good. But adapted screenplay, I as reading it, I, I know they base it off numerous other scripts from other writers. That's why they put it as adapted. But as as a film fan, as, as you are, Diego, do you feel like it should be unadapted or should it have been an original category? I think it's original. I don't understand original. the... I, yeah, it's, it's based on a... On an IP as Barbie, yeah. but it's not adapting. Like it's it's just the names. It's just like Barbie and Ken, and, and that's and that's yeah. pretty much it. You know, like it's like saying, um, the Lego Movie would be going up would have mm -hmm. gone up for adapted screenplay. No, I mean it's based on an IP Lego, yes, but the screenplay. It's like it's it's not based on anything. It's based on just your exactly. pure imagination. So, um, yeah. I don't see why you should be here i and it's kind of like mm, i was surprised to see not to not see killers of the flower i think barbie like uh, edged out, because yeah. yeah because edged out killers of the flower moon mm -hmm. um you know that movie i really like it i don't love it as as many other people do um but I, I can't see why this movie. I can't see why this movie is here, though. Like, yeah, Greta, like Greta Gerwig, you know, did the unthinkable with a franchise mm -hmm. with with an IP like this. Um, but yeah, it should have been an original. I think it, if it had been an original, it would have a lot more chances to win. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I. Uh... Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. I hear the horn. They the telling us to keep going. I understand. I understand, good sir, out there. <laughs> so, okay, I think you gotta go with the oh. But I think but. if the thing is that I was also thinking the following: mm -hmm. many of the of the movies that win Best Picture, which I will also talk about, you know, prediction for that yep. one. Like the majority I've seen in the past 20 years, for example, that go on to win Best Picture also win Best Screenplay, either original or adapted. Mm, okay. I mean, it's happened, it's happened with Coda. It's happened with Coda. Moonlight. It's happened with Spotlight. Mm -hmm. You know, and for example, 
everybody thought La La Land was going to win. La La Land, La La Land did not mm -hmm. win a, a yeah. screenplay. Um, so if Poor Things wins, for example, I would be thinking, wait, if Poor Things wins adapted screenplay. Oh, oh, okay. And if there okay. is an edge for Emma Stone to win Best Actress, which we'll talk about in mm -hmm. a bit, there may be an upset in Best Picture, but we'll see. Ooh, we're, it's we're, the we're, only, we're, we'll talk about more of that, but yeah. it's the... Ooh. <laughs> now, you, now you really got me excited when we talk Best Picture, man. <laughs> now you really got me excited. But as of right now, I think you know, let's let's stick on poor things. Let's think on poor things for the win. I know you're staying safe with American fiction. I'm a yeah. I'm gonna go with my heart and go with poor things. And that doesn't always work out for me sometimes, but you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll the dice. We're in Vegas here, I'm betting against the odds. <laughs> if an Oppenheimer right. wins at that's a screenplay, by the way, I think it's all yeah. said and done. That's like oh yeah, it's, it's gonna sweep entirely. Yeah. All right. This is I, I think Oppenheimer is gonna be one of those movies that wins 10 plus awards in this Oscars. It could, it definitely yeah. could. Yeah. yeah, I think I I feel like minimum is gonna win seven. Yeah, I can Bare see minimum. that. I can definitely yep. see that. All right, now up next is the original screenplays, and the nominees are Anatomy of the Fall, The Holdovers, Mastro, May December, and Past Lives. And a lot, of, I feel I see a lot of people on the Past Lives train for original oh. screenplay, but I recently saw The Holdovers. Mm. Oh my God, mm -hmm. I absolutely love that movie. I think it's Paul okay. Giamatti's best movie in a long time. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I, I think I must stick with the holdovers for original screenplay. Just so how, just how amazing that was. The story he was able to tell between Paul Giamatti and I'm forgetting the actor who he has the relationship with throughout the whole Dominic movie. Dominic Sessa, he's amazing. Yes, yes, he's absolutely amazing. amazing. But who you got here, Diego? Who, who's your front horse in this? I think the, the front runner is Anatomy of a Fall. It's mm -hmm. it's gaining a lot of momentum, a ton of yeah. steam. I was super surprised to see it win at the Golden Globes, first of all, and then mm -hmm. ever since then, it has won it has won so many screenplay awards. And I think I think that's gonna win. However, the other two is the holdovers, which yeah. I mean, if if there's one more than one actor win. In the Oscars, I can see original screenplay for the holdovers. Mm, for sure. Okay. For sure. Right. But my dark horse is one of my favorite movies of the year is Past Lives. I'm pulling for okay. Past Lives here. All right. It's one of my favorites. Yes. I I think um that that script alongside uh, uh Port of Things and Oppenheimer mm -hmm. as well is my it's my favorite. I, I was floored. I was absolutely floored by that movie. It affected me so much. Nice. Okay, I need now. I need, I need to get past lives on my list before next before March 10th, because like, again, I've heard a lot about that one too. It's a, it's a lot of past lives and uh, anatomy of the fall. That's kind of been the two that's been getting the most circuit more attention when it comes to original screenplay. So I I'm really interested to see if if my pick can eke e out a win at the end right there. All right, now we're gonna get into best. Original music for song and score. Up, we're gonna do the score first. The nominees are for American Fiction, Laura Carpman, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, John Williams, the legend himself, Killers of the Flower Moon, Robbie Robertson, Oppenheimer again, Ludwig Gorenson, and Poor Things, Jerkson Fendrickson. Now, listen, Diego, I love John Williams. I think he is a living legend when it comes to score. The man is gonna be doing this. Past 100 years old. He was supposed to retire yeah. when he was 90. <laughs> and on it, honestly, I would have had him win this category any other year, even mm -hmm. though the movie itself was probably not the best. Mm -hmm. But Ludwig Gorgson, man. That man's a that man's a magician. That man's great. I love I've loved Ludwig Gorgson since the first Creed, since Creed 2, when he got onto Black Panther, when he was doing The Mandalorian. The, I think Ludwig Gorgson is a shoo-in to win original score hands down in this category because he killed it in Oppenheimer. Absolutely. He's going to win his second Oscar. This is, and oh, yeah. the guy is so young. I don't think he's even he 40. He is. He's, yes. 
he's a G- I love I love his score in Tenet as well. Oh my god, Tenet was a good score. Yes, I think the music in that movie mm-hmm. like made it ten times better. Like it made it so much more enjoyable to me, thanks okay. to his score. Um, yeah, he's absolutely going to win. Um, he's been sweeping all all season. It's one of my favorite scores in movies ever. I've been listening to that score Ooh. for yes. I think it's gonna okay. go down as one of the best scores of a movie ever. Um, like the tracks are just so. Mem- can you hear the music? Is yes. probably the most iconic out of them all. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the, the theme with Kitty and either me- meeting Kitty or mm. Ma- Manhattan Project. It's just so beautiful. There's just such, such a sense of tragedy, but also warmth to that yeah. music. And also American Prometheus, um, the, Trini- the Trinity Test. Um, there's also these, this track called, called Fusion when Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. and Killian Murphy having their face off as well. And also with uh, Jason Clark's character, The Story yeah. of the oh World. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Like the film is so fueled by the energy of the music, like it, it has to go with the package. Like it's gonna, it's gonna be optimal. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. And piggybacking off that, just all the way to the end of the film where we finally hear what Oppenheimer and Einstein was talking about when he tells him, "Yeah, we destroyed the world." And from there, the music, the bombastic mm-hmm. impact of that. I swear, the music. I left that theater absolutely terrified, and that is the power of adding that kind of music that Ludwig Gorsin was able to create for that scene. Absolutely. He, he, he somehow mixed like the sense of like, like, you know, craving for imagination and creativity through mm-hmm. science, like getting into Oppenheimer's head with, yeah. an, with an edge of, of, um, of a bleak future coming ahead mm-hmm. ever since the beginning of the movie. It, it was it was surreal. It was surreal. Um, no, I was absolutely floored. Um, and as much as I like the other the uh, the other nominees, I I was surprised to see American Fiction here. Like, it's a yeah, a little cool bit horror, but I mean, it's it's jazz music. But I guess I don't know. <laughs> I would have <laughs> I would have nominated Spider Verse here across the Spider Verse mm, should have yeah. been here, and Society of the Snow. Oh, okay. You know who did the 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 score for? Let me see, for for Society of the Snow. Just let me check. Society of the Snow. Oh, let us know, man. Let us know. Original composer, Michael Giacchino. Michael Giacchino. Michael Giacchino. Yes. Oh my God. Okay, okay now. Okay, <laughs> yes. yeah. So yeah, if I'm if I'm gonna take anyone out, it'd probably be American Fiction and put in Michael Giacchino because. Wow, I did not know he did the score for Society of the Snow. I was also surprised, and it wow. added to to the movie like so much. I loved it, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, I think I would I, w- I would have swapped across the Spider Verse with uh, with Indiana Jones. Like that, that, that that's fair. That's fair. I th- I think animation should be uh, uh, like through a lot more nominations here you know awards here but that would be like for another discussion we're gonna have (laughs) um (laughs) we digress on that point (laughs) i also love the score for killers it also like really Mm. added to the suspense of the of the movie Uh, also for poor things the poor the the poor thing score is like so out of control it's It's a good one yeah but oppenheimer it's gotta win. And <laughs> that's gonna be the theme for this for this uh, discussion. But Oppenheimer, <laughs> yeah, like it's another level. <laughs> All right, now on to probably I think the more fun night when the, in the Oscars where they get everyone to perform the songs. Best yeah. original song we got the fire inside from Flame and Hot. I'm just Ken from Barbie, and Never Went Away from American Symphony. Wawazi, I think it's how you pronounce it. Apologies if it's mm-hmm. yeah. Apologies if it's mispronounced. Uh, but Wazi from Kills of the Flower Moon, what I was made from from Barbie. I think it's a two horse race, and they're both from Barbie. Yeah. I'm just Ken, and what I was made from. I think I'm just Ken had that impactful, ridiculous silliness 
that yeah. it was so it was a weird part of the movie they put it in but throughout the <laughs> sequence throughout the sweet sequence of that of that musical it was really really fun really interesting especially at the end but i think what i was made for is probably the shoe in to yeah. win it I'm a little upset Jack Black Peaches wasn't nominated in this because we're going to have Ryan Gosling and Jack Black singing at the Oscars. That would have been so epic. <laughs> it would have. It would have. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to go for what I was made for by Billie Eilish. Uh, what What do you think, Diego? Is it is it a Barbie win no matter what? Or maybe we got American Symphony coming out of nowhere. What do you think? It's a two, it's a it's a it's it's a race between the Barbie songs. I mm-hmm. think um, I don't think what was I made for is like doubt is gonna win overwhelmingly because I feel okay. like there's also like a strong supporting for I'm just Ken because yeah. you know it's also like a very memorable song very memorable part of the movie but mm-hmm. I think it's Billie Eilish second Oscar and she like the the that part of the of the movie is really summarizes what the movie really is about and it's with margo robbie's character it is with barbie herself so i feel like if there's one secure oscar for barbie is 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 this song from billy Eilish, which is also amazing like i i saw an interview uh, a few weeks ago in which she didn't know how to do this song she was like oh yeah, she, she said, I think she said to Greta Gerwig or someone from the creative team, like, I don't mm-hmm. know if I am able to write the song. I don't know if I'm able to do this for you. And she said, she explained that uh, days later, she had like this moment of pure inspiration mm-hmm. and she wrote and she she wrote the song. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Um, it would be wacky. Very wacky <laughs> to say I'm just can win. That would, we would get a second Ryan Gosling meme, just like right? we got with the uh, Christmas. <laughs> but I, no, I think it's what was I made for? That would be funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it it would be fun to see I just can winning it because as much as you were saying how much impact that song had, I think I'm just can does have that same impact. But yeah, what I was made for it it comes at a point of the movie where. Like Barbie was making this huge decision for herself yeah. on whether or not to be alive. And describing how you how you were talking about how Billy Irish didn't know how to tackle that, I think that speaks more volume t- into the song itself. Yes. And I think I think that scene alongside with America First speech, I think are the two mm-hmm. scenes that resonated the most with people. So it, it, it just feels like it fits for this song to win. Yeah, absolutely. So I I think we're we're both on the same train here. What I was made for for the win for best original song. Up next, it's gonna be something that I think we're both gonna have a lot of fun with. Animated feature film. Mm. And the nominees are The Boy and the Heron, Elemental, Nimona, Robot Dreams, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Diego, give me your thoughts real quick. This is probably probably this is probably the closest race for animated feature in a long time so what what does your heart say and what does your brain say how do you <laughs> find the, how, where do you find the middle ground in that <laughs> oof oof i was waiting for this category because this is the most <laughs> exciting category i think like yep. personally um my brain says it's a very fierce race between across the spider verse and, and the boy and the heron mm-hmm. i would i didn't think but the boy and the heron would be putting this much of a fight with across the spider verse i thought spider verse had it in the back no matter what happened what other movie came out in 2023 yeah. but but the boy in the heron has been really surprising a lot and the golden globes and the baftas spider verse won critics choice but also won in the uh, pga for best mm-hmm. animated feature i'm really not sure which is gonna win i could go either way because into the Spider Verse also won. Hayao Miyazaki also won with Spirit to the Way. Mm-hmm. Like the, I think it, like they're gonna decide which movie to give their the second Oscar. You know, um, it's very it. 
maybe across the Spider-Verse just because of that PGA win might have the edge, mm. might have the edge. And it also swept at the Annie Awards just recently yep. with seven awards. It did. But I'm just hoping. I'm just <laughs> fucking hoping. I'm sorry for the F bomb. <laughs> and no, you're good, man. You're good. If Nomona wins. Hearts. If Nomona oh. wins. Oh, okay. I'll, that would be the happiest. It would be, it, it would make me the happiest person ever. It, it would be one of the best comeback stories for a movie mm -hmm. ever. I'm glad you mentioned that because I think the Mona Guinea just nominated is a feat on its own, especially yes. through all the hurdles mm -hmm. and ridiculousness they had to go through. I was I was a little surprised mm -hmm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem wasn't nominated. I thought that was a really good one this year. But Nimona, that's definitely a dark horse for the win here in animated feature. I think Elemental was a victim of poor promotion because what, yeah. what they were promoting for that movie did not resonate to what the film really was, mm -hmm. unfortunately. I'm glad it got nominated. That was one of my one of my favorite animated movies last year. I don't see it getting in the win. And like you said, it's Miyazaki, it's Marvel, Spider-Man, and the Boy and the Heron. It's a two-horse race. It can go either way. It's a coin flip. I may be biased right here if it not if you don't notice I have a poster uh, for the movie. I, I think I have to go Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse because what they were able to do for a for an animated movie itself was amazing. And yes. take out take out the multiverse storyline out of it. It is a story about loss, it's a story about family, how to keep everyone together, how to how how to do the right thing for not only yourself but for the larger picture of its own that's a great me a story that they were telling oh man i think and and i know it's miyazaki's final film it's his crescendo his goodbye farewell i'm gonna go spider-verse i'm gonna go yeah, spider-verse Spider for the win for the win and I, as much as i love nimona nimona was a great movie to watch mm -hmm. i'm gonna go i'm gonna go spider-verse you know, Spider i go haven't Spider seen uh-huh I, I was surprised that it didn't get the Best Picture nomination. I thought if there was any movie that was going to get Best Picture from animation, it should have been Spider-Verse. It absolutely should have. Yes, considering that it was also in the talks for many other uh, mm -hmm. um, categories as well. Like It was also in talks for Best Visual Effects, Best mm -hmm. uh, Original Score. So yeah, it was also surprising to see, him to see it just getting one nomination. One nomination. Now... I haven't seen The Boy and the Heron. I want that's a movie I want to react to actually. Um, oh, okay. At some point, yeah, I don't know when, <laughs> but <laughs> I want to react to that movie. I'm a, a huge my Hayao Miyazaki fan, but I mean, I saw across. I think Across the Spider Verse is a beautiful, beautiful sequel. Like, um, absolutely. And just considering, like, the that, that's the thing. Like, every one of these movies like has a strong narrative behind them. Because mm -hmm. across the Spider Verse, you know, they went like th the animation detail in that movie is so oh, much. Detail. And you got, and we got to know like a month later or something or weeks later that the animators were in a hurdle to, mm -hmm. to make that movie work, to make that movie look as beautiful as it, as it does. Yeah. Um, the Boy and the Heron, it's Hayao Miyazaki's last movie, as you said. Um, and the Mona was buried at Disney. It was a movie that yep. was not supposed to exist until Annapurna Pictures and Netflix said, no, we're going to release this movie and Absolutely. we're going to, um, we're really going to put the themes, the, gra the graphic novel that Andy mm -hmm. Stevenson wrote, um, we're going to put it on screen and, and make it justice. Um, so I, I feel like every one of these is deserving. I haven't seen Elemental or Robot Dreams. Yeah, um, I've, here, I've, yeah. I've heard mixed things about Elemental, Robot Dreams, I haven't heard so much, but Nimona, look, Nimona is <laughs> my favorite movie of the year alongside Oppenheimer, not gonna lie. I, I, I don't blame you, man. Nimona, it's, and credit, so to, credit to them to taking that risk for Nimona, sticking with the storylines and themes, and not trying to change it for any corporate entity. I yeah. mean, they could have, they could have, you know, 
you know, scale it down a bit. But no, they stuck they stuck to the guns to the original graphic novel, and that's amazing to see. Hopefully, hopefully we get more. I know they were talking about Nimona getting spinoff sequels. Yeah, uh, we just. And we just recently saw they put the whole movie on YouTube for a week, which hopefully maybe that gets a little more attention, gets a little more, hey, before the voting closes for them. So we'll, we'll see, hopefully. That was a good move. That was very, it that was. was like, like hey, we also, we're also nominated. Mm -hmm. We are also worthy of, of mm -hmm. being voted at the Oscars. I'm going to go for Across the Spider-Verse, like, like you just said, but I'm just hoping for that moment win. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And to quote the great Guillermo del Toro from when he said last year's Oscars, animation is film. Yeah. It is. That that man Cinema. goes to bat for animation so many times. And that, I remember watching that. And I still think about it. Animated movies are still film. Film is film. Animation is film. There's no there's no if, ands, or buts about it. It's, that's my two cents on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Totally agree with you. All right. Up next is the big acting awards. We're going to start with the actresses and best lead and supporting. We're going to start with the actress in supporting role. We got Emily Blunt from Oppenheimer, Danielle Brooks from The Color Purple, America Ferreira from Barbie, Jodie Foster from Nadad, or Naid. I believe how it's Nayad, right? I think it is. Nayad, Nayad. Okay. Yep. And Daveen Joy Randolph from The Holdovers. Now, I. When I first heard America Ferrer getting nominated for this, blew me by surprise. I Same. I wasn't yeah, I was not expecting her to get nominated. And when I heard her nomination, I was like, ooh, she might just win. Because sometimes when you hear these out of nowhere nominations, those are usually the ones that come out of nowhere to win it all. Mm -hmm. But Davin Joy Randolph yeah. has she not only killed it. In the holdover, she one of my she was one of my favorite parts in that movie. Yeah, she's no, winning, she... yeah, she's winning all the awards, the Globes, the critics, the SAG, the BAFTA. She's been sweeping everywhere. I would be surprised if Randolph doesn't win this award because this is hers to lose. Really is exactly yes. You just said it. This is hers to lose. This this is the category that the holdovers has it in the bag one hundred percent. She's great in that movie. She gave the movie a cert like a certain sense of i don't know like it really helped yeah. the presence to to paul giamatti's and the money the minic says dominic says character and mm -hmm. just put this you know put across this theme of family and also loss like it really re it's 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 the one thing that also really resonated with audiences i can see yeah she was really the whole glue in that movie too. Yes, yes. That that scene at the party mm -hmm. where she's oh, like having God, that the breakdown, party. like it's mm -hmm. it's very real. Like, oh yeah. I I, I when I see her in that scene, I, was, I I get reminded of certain people in my life that also went through that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's it's totally hers. It's totally hers. I would love to see. I've been a big fan of Emily Blunt for years, for years and mm. years. And I think her role is very underrated in Oppenheimer. I think she has okay. some very explosive scenes in, in that movie. She does. And as much as little screen time as she has, like she makes every second count. She has mm -hmm. a very memorable presence in that movie. And like everything with the facial gestures, with the way she says things, her anger, that yes. scene with Jason Clark as well, like uh, well, that's one of my favorite scenes in that movie where she's yes. back and forth with Jason Clark in that hearing. Oh my god, it, it just that that's that is acting class one hundred and one right there. That totally. was amazing. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. I totally agree. Like you, you can see like how much internal synergy mm -hmm. the actors are. But I think she has to. I think Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt will have to wait for Oscar. She will get one eventually. <laughs> oh yeah, but absolutely. Yes, and like you said, I was also surprised to see America Ferrera nominated. I think mm -hmm. she killed in that speech. Oh yeah. I, th I think that 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 that's her Oscar scene. That's her Oscar. Oh yeah, scene. absolutely. That's the scene that they're gonna show when they mention her name yeah. for America Ferrera. And good, I mean, good on her. What a career like America Ferrera has from going from Ugly Betty to now. That yes. that's very testament to her and still sticking around. 
very surprising. Yes, I haven't seen Daniel Brooks in Color Purple or Jodie Foster in that. Jodie Foster, like I, I hey. looked, um, I looked over the internet a few days ago. It, she hasn't been nominated in years, like in over it's twenty been a years or something. Like, yeah. I'm surprised because she's also, I think, arguably one of the best actresses that have worked ever. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jodie Foster still got it. She still got it, man. She still got it. And you know what? This just came. This this just came to mind. I was so convinced of Angela Bassett winning last year for Black mm. Panther: Wakanda Forever, and she was winning all those awards too. And then out of nowhere, Jimmy Lee Curtis swipe came in, yeah, swiped it right. away. <laughs> I say it as she stole it from <laughs> Angela Bassett. <laughs> but the way you were describing Emily Blunt and her performance in Oppenheimer, I could definitely see that happening in this year's Oscars as well. I can I can definitely see it. I I don't think it will, but if there was a percentage chance of it happening, I'll give it a twenty five percent chance. Yeah, considering Blatt, how know. many Oscars Oppenheimer could win, like it could be mm -hmm. like such an overwhelming sweep. Yeah, it could be the biggest sweep since Return of the King. That is true. That is. It true. could be the biggest because everything everywhere won seven. Slumdog mm -hmm. Millionaire won eight. Mm -hmm. I. Th think Oppenheimer might win minimum seven or eight and sweep more than that. Who know who knows if they're just gonna go all low, all on with Oppenheimer. <laughs> yeah it, it's looking that way. I, I think it def it'll definitely reach 10. It will definitely reach 10 wins okay. for sure for this year's Oscars. I I fully believe that. But I I think <laughs> our both our picks Devin Joy Randolph yep. for the win for best supporting actress. Now, best actress in a leading role. We got Annette Benning from Nay Nayad. From uh, sorry if I said wrong again. <laughs> Nayad. Yes, Nayad. No worries. Annette Benning from Nayad. Lily Gladstone from Killers of the Flower Mood. Sandra Huller from An Anatomy of the Fall. Carrie Mulligan from Mastro. And Emma Stone for Poor Things. Uh, what do you who do you think is the front runner in this one? We, you talked about it earlier. You think Emma Stone is probably the front runner? Do you still think that? I think it's 50-50. That's the thing. I, I think it's 50-50 between Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone. I cannot predict. Mm. I cannot see yeah. how, like, it's honestly unpredictable. Because Lily Gladstone's win at the SAG just, and, and that's in the middle of voting of the, of the, voting of the Oscars. Yep. I thought, oof, maybe it's, maybe Emma Stone's not that much of a front runner anymore. As, and as much as I think Emma Stone delivered the best perform. I think it's that I think her her performance is the best of the year, hands down, across any other actor. It's my favorite performance of hers in her career. Maybe Lily Gladstone. I th I'm thinking Lily Gladstone with that SAG award. It just what could happen here is what ha is what happened um, last year with Michelle Yeoh. Mm. Because oh, Kate, okay. Kate Blanchett was was sweeping, yep. and then Michelle Yeoh uh, won at the at the SAG at the SAG Awards, and she wanted to she she went to to win the Oscar. Now, my biggest doubt here, though, is that Michelle Yeoh wasn't everything everywhere everywhere all at once. It's the mm -hmm. movie that won every single every single major award that season yeah. right no uh -huh. lily glassstone is not part of the winning package that is oppenheimer she's part of killers of the flower moon and killers of the yeah. flower of the flower moon only has one shot really at winning an oscar and it's best actress so yeah. i'm not 100 percent sure that lily glassstone because of the sag win oh is like she's gonna win the oscar I don't know. It's just so so unpredictable. It's unpredictable, unpredictable because poor things as of right now is at its peak in terms of talks with mm -hmm. people and all. So it really is a 50-50. My heart goes Emma Stone. My brain with <laughs> considering the Sagwin and the Oscar voting going on at the same time. I think Lily Gladstone, right. but it, it's gonna go either way. I don't know what what do you think? <laughs> It, it, it is a two horse race because they both split. Emma Stone got the BAFTA, she got the Critics' Choice. Lily Gladstone got the SAG, she got the Golden Globe. It's 
and this again, this is a it's a coin flip. It's gonna be yeah, right down to the wire. I think Lily Gladstone had one of the had the best performance in Killers of the Flower Moon. Yes, and that says a lot in a movie with De Niro, with DiCaprio, totally. uh, Jesse Plemons. And that says a lot with her being the standout in that movie. But Emma Emma Stone, she did a she did a lot of amazing things and poor things. It's really really hard to go against a performance like that. What she had to do to really get into that character. Oh, man. That's the thing. Like both performances are so different because yes. Emma Stone is going like mm-hmm. all out. Lily Gladstone mm-hmm. is so much more subtle and somber. Yes, and there's a lot to her facial expressions as well. Mm-hmm. So, I think either, either or cinema, yes. it, cinema wins with either because there are two of right. the best performances of the year. We're, um, we're just spoiled with goodness here, man. Exactly, <laughs> and also I think if. Like the, the that category, I think it's stacked because it have is. you seen Anatomy of a Fall? I have not yet. No, but I, again, I heard good things about it. Sandra Huller steals that. Like he is such a powerhouse. Ooh. She's gonna become okay. a powerhouse after this, and she's also great in the zone of interest. Okay. Um, th- there's one scene in Anatomy of a Fall in which she is like, you know, having this 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 big explosive moment, mm-hmm. and I thought, oh, I think. This is my favorite, like, fight in a movie between two people since Marriage Story. I was oh. like, "Ooh, that it's that kind of intensity," and okay. I and she she's the, the movie. The movie's long; it's two hours and a half, and she holds that movie across the board. Um, okay. I would also love for, uh, to see her win. Um, and Carrie Mulligan is my favorite part of Maestro by far. Yep, she yep. really carried that movie as much as i liked bradley cooper in that movie i think carrie mulligan is the heart and soul of that film and i just love her even more as an act uh, uh, as an actress from that movie i haven't seen naiad but these other four performances they are hands down top, top tier top tier oh, yeah. yeah and carrie mulligan has really she's been nominated but not getting as much attention as as the other uh, nominees obviously yeah but, but hey, good on her. She, like you said, she carried that movie. She was the heart and soul of that. Getting the nomination is achievement as as enough for some. So, I mean, yeah. hopefully, we'll see her down the road getting another nomination and getting that win. Absolutely, I've been a fan of her since Drive. Oh my gosh, she's she's gr- she's upset. so underrated and great in that movie. She the she's you're... like the soul with Ryan Gosling in that movie. What, what I was gonna, gonna say, say your your obsession with Ryan Gosling, my friend. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't I can't I can't help it. The the man the man has had my heart for a very long time. <laughs> hey, hey, who can blame you? And speaking of Mr. Gosling, we're now in the supporting role for an actor in this year's Oscars and talk about a stacked lineup. We got totally. Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction, Robert De Niro for Killers of the Flower Moon, Robert Johnny Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer, Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things. And Ryan Gosling for Barbie. I, I have to say, this is probably the most stacked year of a supporting role in a long time. But, but, yeah, this mm-hmm. is Downey Jr.'s award. Yes. This is RDJ's award handout. I said that after watching Oppenheimer. How do you not give that guy the Oscar? Him as, him as uh, Admiral Strauss throughout the whole movie was amazing. Hit from the confirmation hearing to his back and forth with Oppenheimer throughout the years and him having that face to face with Alden Ehrenreich, which that I'm surprised that was Alden Ehrenreich in that, in that part. It was been a while since I've seen him in anything and his back and forth with that and just his conviction of how he's doing everything he can to prove Oppenheimer was wrong and he was right. And that was ultimately, ultimately his downfall. I thought he played that role to perfection, to perfection. What say what say you, my friend? Is it Downey Jr. or is it your love Gosling? <laughs> <laughs> as much as I love Ryan Gosling, I'm so sorry, but this is not his year yet. <laughs> yet. Because he is going to win mm-hmm. an Oscar one day. I'm oh, yeah. Pretty sure. But this is Downey Jr.'s year. She, he oh, killed yeah. it in Oppenheimer. He was um alongside Killian Murphy, the most magnetic part mm-hmm. of that movie. You could say he's also like the second protagonist, even because it feels like that the mm. way it's told. 
you know, yeah. because, you know, with the colored scenes, it is from Killian Murphy's um, uh, point of view, from Oppenheimer's point of view. The black yeah. and white really is like the Robert Downey Jr. show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, he, he added this, this like sense of um, darkness and, and, and like, shadiness to the movie that 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 yes. like it, it, it was it was a very it was a very particular energy and i'm so yeah. glad nolan casted him in this movie because the guy has been amazing for years i feel like it's not only going to be an oscar for his performance in oppenheimer but also like a lifetime achievement mm, award kind okay. of okay like yeah because um look i, I know him I, I know like you know him as Iron Man is you know this really um it's ingrained in pop culture and it's not taken seriously as a performance mm -hmm. but I feel like I, I can't see anyone else as well um as, as Iron Man he absolutely made his role his own and I think that's something very characteristic from him he yeah. also he also the, he also was in that Chaplin movie. He was Charles Chaplin, and yeah, he absolutely killed it in that role. I, <laughs> I was blown away when I saw that movie a few years ago, and I'm so glad that he is gonna win the Oscar because he has he's been part of some of the most like um, some of the biggest achievements in cinema. You know, with absolutely. the creation of the MCU and with mm -hmm. Oppenheimer as a movie. Like with the performance that he gave, no, nah, he's gonna win. He's gonna win. Yeah, uh, I I cannot agree with you more on that. And it's funny you say that about how it's gonna be more of a lifetime achievement, and that makes a total that makes a hundred percent sense. He he was nominated for Chaplin back in the day. He was nominated for Tropic Thunder, one of my favorite yes. movies of his. One of my favorite movies of his on all time, minus the MCU movies. He did start a whole cinematic universe behind him. He was the he was the jumping point on that, and you know he and it's crazy after after Iron Man after his time he was kind of not floundering but he had Doolittle which really was not a good movie. Place. Yeah, <laughs> not a good movie. Uh, he's he was doing a lot of these uh, restoration shows on Max, and he mm -hmm. kind of figured oh maybe he's gonna be stepping away from acting a bit. Uh, but when you get that call from Nolan, you, it's hard to say no to to Nolan. And he he answered the call in more ways than one, and it's amazing. And not, and not to under under undersell any of the other nominees, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, Robert De Niro, he's a living legend. He always brings it. It's oh, yeah. well, I can I can think of a couple of bad movies of Robert Downey Jr. or Robert De Niro. Robert sorry, De Niro. <laughs> but you know he, I think when he put him with Scorsese. It's magic in a bottle every time. Sterling K. Brown has always been one of my favorite actors for a long time as well. He's always been killing it. Right? Ryan Gosling as Ken, I thought, was astounding. I really do. That was, if there was a scene stealer, that was him. Any scene he was in, he yeah. made sure he he stole it and didn't. And he ran away, but they didn't go back to the bank or anything like that. He made sure that it was right there for him for the taking and mark ruffalo again i love mark ruffalo i i didn't give him enough chance in this category just because you know is downey jr gosling that i think that was a two horse race throughout the whole mm -hmm. thing and downey jr yeah that that one's going to be the if there was a 100 percent guarantee of a win i'm putting it on robert downey jr to win totally totally and it's also because it's part of the the sweeper of the Oscars, mm -hmm. so I, I can't see other scenario happening. Sterling K. Brown, I'm glad he, I'm really glad he's nominated because oh, he, yeah. uh, he's also a really. I saw him. I, I didn't realize until I saw the movie. I, I saw him the first time in Supernatural years ago. He was a vampire. Ooh, <laughs> he was a vampire wow. in Supernatural. Yes, he's, it's a Dang. long time. It's a long career he's had. He and, has, yeah. <laughs> and um. He gave really this sense of like warmth, and he he grounded the movie with mm -hmm. Jeffrey Wright. I I loved the scenes Ugh. with with them together. Like, Beautiful. it really brought it home to me. And um, I, yeah, so glad he's nominated. 
also Robert De Niro, he give he gave mm -hmm. it's been a minute since he's given such yeah. a dark performance. Mm -hmm. Because like, that was it was absolutely <laughs> terrifying. It was like I'm so I was so glad to see him with this caliber of acting again. Because mm -hmm. he he was in his A game in the 70s, oh, yeah. in the 80s, in the 90s. Then he had like fun roles here and there. Yeah, you know, he's gotta and get money is, for the grandkids, yeah. Which is great. You know, one of my favorite fun roles of his actually, which is not that much talk about, is him in Stardust. Have you seen that movie? Oh, it's been a minute. It's been a minute since I seen Stardust. He's completely wacky and out <laughs> of control in that movie. Like I was so glad I was so glad to see him like being so having fun, you know? Yeah. But and then but then to see him like in a role so sinister and so mm -hmm. subtle as well because it's not like overwhelmingly like evil you know like it's like on your face but you know yep. there's evil behind him um yeah so glad to see him also nominated once again like he can he's one of the best actors of all time Absolutely. um mark ruffalo he is one of the funniest parts of four things i'm so glad to see him like just off he the is. hook he is <laughs> He he is one of the best parts in that movie. Not to downgrade his um, nomination, I just think it's a stronger year uh, compared to all the other actors. But R Ruffalo, when he got this, when he had to bring the silliness, he brought it tenfold and played played so well off Emma Stone. It was exactly he she, he mm -hmm. was on Emma Stone's level oh, yeah. of chemistry. Like, was, the, the mm -hmm. chemistry was right there, and I really. It's hard for me to picture another actor that could be on that same level of chemistry other than Ryan Gosling, which obviously mm -hmm. Hammerstone has a lot of chemistry with in movies. Um, I would I would have loved to see Willem Dafoe in this in this Ooh. category as well because it's a yeah it's an it's it's the archetype of the scientist, but not mm -hmm. the type you expect. It's it's yeah. very different. It's it, it was it was so warm. It was so. Mm -hmm. It, it, not, it not that brought menacing. Not the, yeah, exactly. Not the menacing type. It brought this kind mm -hmm. of real emotion to the movie that I really wasn't expecting. Yeah. Um, but that's yeah, a good Ryan, argument to make. Yeah. Yes, but Ryan Gosling, <laughs> like my God. And here's the thing, mm -hmm. I really think he did steal. He did steal the movie for me. I know oh. there's a lot of talks about, um, hey, Ryan Gosling wasn't really that great in the movie i've seen that take like mm. come on R ryan gosling brought his a game in terms of comedy here and he has been yeah. i mean margot robbie was also perfect she was the perfect choice for barbie like i cannot absolutely. see any other actress absolutely performing like and she killed it she really killed in that role but ken like the the role of ken he really made that mm -hmm. role his own and the thing is that Ryan Gosling, I don't think there's been credit enough to his comedic performances that much. Oh, absolutely not. He is also he's great in drama, but he's also great in Crazy Stupid Love. Mm -hmm. But mostly, my favorite comedic performance of his extremely overlooked movie is The Nice Guys. He's thank you. I was thinking of The Nice yes. Guys. Him and Russell, <laughs> him and Russell Crowe played so well. That's that's honestly <laughs> my favorite movie of Ryan Gosling. I it. I absolutely love that movie. I hope totally. I was always hoping we get a sequel of that one. I'm so glad you said the nice guys. No, yes, that's that's one of his best performances. That's that's him completely off the hook. If you if mm -hmm. like if someone if, if you're a fan of Ryan Gosling and Barbie, yes. I highly recommend the nice guys because absolutely he's the funniest in that movie. And you, like you said, Russell Crowe, like unexpectedly perfect chemistry right there. Yes. Mm -hmm. incredible and i think that's not as much as a, a, a fan i am of ryan gosling oh before that mm -hmm. that i think the reason why the nice guys was not that talked enough when it was released is because it was released in 2016 that's the same year as la la land oh yeah that's i think it came out in the wrong year if it came out that's in a different point. one could be a different conversation but it was with another top tier Ryan Gosling performance in La La Land. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think Ryan Gosling's performance in Barbie is even top five. There's like mm, yes, okay. He's a 
I think that's one of his best performances in Barbie, but I don't think that's close to his top five. Wow, I'm 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 really interested to hear your top five at a later later time, unless oh, you want to sure. do it now. Up to <laughs> no, it but, could be a different conversation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I I think the general consensus here, but Oppenheimer, but Robert Downey Jr. I think that's exactly. the general consensus here. All right, up next is the actor in a leading role, and again, I think a heavy stacked cast of actors here for the lead role we got bradley cooper for mastro colin domingo for rustin paul giamatti for the holdovers killian murphy from oppenheimer and jeffrey wright from american fiction listen as much as i love the holdovers <laughs> paul giamatti gave his best performance jeffrey wright absolutely stole the movie in American fiction, his best performance, I think, to date. Bradley Cooper is Bradley Cooper. It's hard to keep him <laughs> in a bad movie. Yeah. Colin Domingo, out of nowhere, fantastic work. You got the Oscar nomination. You might be the next Kang in the MCU. We don't know yet. Bud Oppenheimer. Killian <laughs> Bud Murphy. Oppenheimer, yeah. <laughs> if there's ever a year for this man to get as much recognition for his work, it's definitely this year. Killian Murphy absolutely stole the performance every time he was on screen as Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer, and just his back and forth with every uh, character that he had, whether it be with Mac Damon's character, the uh, Justin Hart, uh, Justin Hartley's character, I think the one professor that he had with back Just in Hartnett? Berkeley. Justin Hartnett, yes, his character he had back and forth with his back and forth with uh, Downey Jr. His chemistry with Florence Pugh, with Emily Blunt, every and the scenes alone with him, it's just it's astounding. It's one of those yes. one of those performances that we will talk about forever. And yep, Killian Murphy, I, hands down for the win. I I feel like we're on the same page on this one too, right? We're on the same page. We're on the same. I I thought there was going to be much more of a close race between Killian Murphy and Paul Giamatti. Honestly, yeah. I thought there was going to be a lot, a lot more split awards there. Mm -hmm. But after Killian Murphy won at the SAG Awards, I'm like, that's that, it's Killian that's Murphy's done. Oscar. Yes, and yep. I totally agree with you. Like the the chemistry that he had with the rest of the actors, like you 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 see how much care and passion there went for to support Killian Murphy's yep. performance. Chris Nolan has mentioned that in, in interviews and also Matt Damon and, and Robert Downey Jr. It was all really to support Killian Murphy's work and mm -hmm. his performance, like, you know, alongside the music and the directing, he is really one of the reasons this movie almost got $1 billion. Like yes. he, he is just so human, so vulnerable in this movie. He gave such a that's the thing. He he gave such a complex performance with the with his facial expressions. Mm -hmm. And I mean he the, the, on top of that, there's been a lot of memes of the movie <laughs> just with him. <laughs> so yeah, um, just he's, with him. He's been the talk of the year uh with this movie and as a big Killian Murphy fan as I am as well, like uh, he, he's, he, he's seeing his work ever since um, 28 Days Later. Yep. Then with uh, Peaky Blinders, which, god damn, he, he really, he really, he, he makes that show what it is, you know? Yep. And yes, I'm, I'm so glad that we might finally be able to see Killian Murphy with an Oscar. He totally deserves this. And Absolutely. It's his, it's his to lose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, if there's an out of nowhere win in this category, definitely it's going to be Paul Giamatti. Yeah. I thought he, he gave one of his best performances in his entire career. It's it absolutely for me by just the emotion he brought to that role. When I, <laughs> I have no idea how much I love that movie. The holdovers is so good. Wow. It's so amazing. It's just you know, Killian Murphy. It's hard. It's hard to go against a performance like Killian Murphy's. It really is. Yes, and it's not a. It's not like a typical Oscar Beatty performance. It's one not. might say it's not. It's no. not like this 
the tear jerking performance or mm. this you know like you're just kind of like showing off no it's like very somber very, very subtle precise, very, very precise very precise very very profound um yes i think Kelly murphy is going to win the other like if it's not Kelly murphy it's going to be paul giamatti i think if the whole if the holdovers wins best original screenplay i'm going to be thinking hmm mm. maybe paul giamatti is going to my win the oscar just my my okay. because sometimes they go along screenplay and, and yeah. actor awards um but yeah I, I i i would also be thrilled with paul giamatti winning because he's also been such a oh, yeah. ve veteran actor he's so good and so i he was he was great in this movie was it called sideways yes sideways he's mm -hmm. amazing in that movie i don't think he was even nominated for that movie he, he um, wasn't but he had, that's another great performances of his that i don't think enough people talk about exactly and yeah, I I also love the other performances. Jeffrey Wright, I haven't mm -hmm. seen him this um this funny <laughs> in a movie. <laughs> he was True. hilarious. And mm -hmm. it, and it was it was a difficult character to pull off because he's not oh, yeah. the most likable protagonist, really. Mm -hmm. And he really he really brought something different to that to that character. And the other perform the other performances were what again? Uh, we got Bradley Cooper, mm -hmm. Bradley Cooper, and Colin Domingo. I'm not go. I didn't. I was not expecting Colin Domingo to be nominated. I, I saw Rustin. I thought it was good. Very good uh, movie. I was in movie. Colin okay. Domingo. Yeah, Colin Domingo. I thought I gave a very good performance, but I wasn't. I, that came out of nowhere for me, to be totally honest. And Bradley Cooper, again, it's he does. He doesn't really. Put out bad performances, especially when he's directing at the same time. He's usually pretty much on all cylinders on that. Yes, I I haven't seen um, Rustin, but I really like Bradley Cooper in that mm -hmm. in that movie. I wasn't really a fan of the movie necessarily, yeah. um, especially considering that he also directed a *Star Is Born*, which is such a beautiful movie. I love that movie. Yeah. So. I was, I guess, I was expecting just a bit more, but um, in terms of the story, but you can see the passion from Bradley Cooper yeah. in that performance, and I really respect him for that. And I just, I just think it's not his year yet. He's gonna win the Oscar eventually. He's been nominated oh, yeah. many times before, and and he's such a dedicated actor. So I'm also hoping for him to win someday. Um, but but it's in a movie that Kerry Mulligan stole. So mm -hmm. if Kerry Mulligan doesn't win, I, I can't see Bradley Cooper winning in this one. So that's true. That's a good point. That is a very good point. <laughs> and again, I think obviously consensus say Killian Murphy for the win on this category. Up next, we're going to be in cinematography. We're going to be talking about what makes this movie so pretty, so beautiful, so gosh darn awesome to see. And the nominees are. El Condon, Edward Lynchman, Kills of the Fire Moon, Rodrigo Perito, Mastro, Matthew Labatique, Oppenheimer, Hoyte von Hotene. I hopefully I got Hoytema. that right. Hoyte von Hotene. There you go. That's what we got international blood in here. <laughs> and poor <laughs> things, Robbie Ryan. Again, I think it's another Oppenheimer win. Cinematography wise, it's hard to go against that kind of camera work that was in that movie. Especially when, especially in that testing scene for the Trinity Project, I thought it was absolutely breathtaking. What do you What do you think, Diego? I think, I think Oppenheimer is gonna win. He's been sweeping in, and has been sweeping in this award as well. Like some of the scenes really stand out because of the because of the shots. It, even it's just like facial expressions. Like mm -hmm. you remember the scenes because of that, and also like. I don't know. There, 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 are, there are some scenes in which they're in they're in Los Alamos, and I don't know, like the dust, the way the dust looks, and almost mm. like it, the way it feels, it's just it's it feels just like so it's visceral. Yeah. Exactly, it's so visceral, and even even the stuff when Killian, when you get into Killian Murphy's head, like mm. the stuff he's the stuff he's imagining with the atoms and all. Um, yep. No, he's it's been amazing. I would have loved to see Hoyt van Hoytema win 
in other years. I think his work mm -hmm. in Interstellar was the best by far <laughs> in that year, um, 2014. I think Oppenheimer is going to win, but my pick, I think, is Poor Things. You know what? You you're not be, you might not be crazy to say that because that is another <laughs> beautifully shot film. That really is. And just, I mean, if you haven't seen the movie, just looking at the trailer alone, it is, it is a beauty. It's nice to see. It's beautiful to watch. It feels yes. very calming. It's very, it's a very calming um, appearance that it has that makes it look so, so good. Yes. And one, one thing that really stood out to me um, throughout the cinematography is that mm -hmm. you get to have the sense that you're in also in Bella Baxter's head, in Emma Stone's head. Yeah. You know, firstly black and white, and then it's all colored. And then, you know, Bella Baxter goes to this one place, this one island. It's all very monochromatic. You you get to have this like really being in the in the mood as her. So mm -hmm. this cinematography really played a big role in Emma Stone's performance. Um I feel like I feel like this the poor thing cinematography should gain recognition. Um, I, I'll be thrilled to see Oppenheimer win, of course. But I would also it, it would also really warm my heart to see poor things win this because it's I think it's the most original um, oh, yeah. visually looking movie of the year. It, it was beautiful, beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely. Eh? I, I could definitely see it as a dark horse winning, but again, hard to go against Oppenheimer this year. Really yes. hard. All right, we're at we're almost at the end here, folks. We got two more categories to go through. Up next, we got best director. The nominees are Justine Turret from Anatomy of the Fall, Martin Scorsese from Killers of the Flower Moon, Christopher Nolan from Oppenheimer, Yorgos Latimos from Poor Things, and Jonathan Glazer from Zone of Interest. Now, before we get into who we think are going to win, I just want to get your opinion real quick. Do you feel Greta Gerwig was unjustifiably snubbed in this category? Because I, I think there is maybe one or two names you can replace to put Greta Gerwig in because I thought she did an amazing job directing Barbie. It's hard to say because there are many other direct, like very well-directed movies that I prefer mm -hmm. over Barbie. Okay. The issue really is that <laughs> I cannot see any other director directing Barbie even. That's the thing. That, like I, That is true. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot see. Um, I really can't see any other visionary as her, like the, the, the visionary that she's becoming, mm -hmm. come, up with the, come up with the world and the script and just yes. the visuals. Like she re like really the, the movie is her her achievement mostly i mean yeah. margot robbie and ryan gosling they did an amazing job but if it wasn't for Gerald gerwig her, her direction vision, yes and and the comedy chops that she has mm -hmm. amazing amazing the thing is that i i agree with this list i do okay. agree with this list okay um and i would have loved I would have loved to see Greta Gerwig here, but I would have also loved to see Celine Song from Past Ooh, Lives. Okay, and that's yeah. her first movie. And the way she directed that movie, like, it was so... Ah, like, it, it was soul-crushing, the way she directed mm -hmm. that movie. She relied so heavily on the performances. Like, amazing. Amazing direction from her. But I also... I, I, I mean, no. How can you how can you compete with Nolan in Oppenheimer? Um, right. I can't see any other filmmaker uh, other than Martin Scorsese directing *Killers of the Flower Moon*. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's the kind of movie he does, really. Yeah. Um, Justin Trier, amazing job with *Anatomy of a Fall*. I think that movie gets better in a rewatch. I, I rewatched the movie a few days ago, and it's like, no, Justin Trier directed the hell out of that movie. And like the, the script, the performances, there were it was very meticulous. And Jonathan Glazer with Zone of Interest, he I, I was so I was so happy to see him here as well because 
he also directed one of my favorite underrated movies with Under the Skin. Mm, it was okay. Carl Johansson. Very weird movie. Very experimental. <laughs> but what a vision. What a unique vision. And he brought something else to the zone of interest with okay. um, the way he captures uh, the Holocaust. It was very, very, very um, distinctive. But that's the thing. It is such a stacked year for directors. That's the thing. It is. Such it a is. And, and just on that alone, to, to me, I think in any other year, it's a Scorsese versus Nolan. Who's going to win? But I, I want to pick it back on what you said earlier for Robert Downey Jr., that award being his lifetime achievement. This will be Nolan's lifetime achievement award right here. Totally. His, his award for the Dark Knight trilogy, for a memento, for an Estellar, for eh, maybe not Tenet. <laughs> For Inception, a Dun Dunkirk. Dunkirk. Inception, Dunkirk. I I really think this, if there's ever going to be a year where Nolan wins Best Director and really put a pin as one of the great directors of all time, it's going to be this, this year, definitely for sure. Oppenheimer for the win. Scorsese, I feel like he's, gonna, he's going to have, I think, a career like Spielberg and just have like a nomination after a nomination every year, every other year, and not win an award. Like kind of like I don't know if it was last year or the year before with Spielberg directed West Side Story. Mm -hmm. I think honestly I thought he should have won because that move that his his portrayal of West Side Story was amazing. Well, I think I I love his direction even more in the Fablemans, you know. Oh, and the Fablemans, yeah. I yeah. like after after a few years of Steven Spielberg, you know, kind of like relaxing. It felt mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah, he really came off super strong with West High Story and Fable Man. So, I was that oh, this is Steven Spielberg's magic, and oh, yeah, yeah I, I, I definitely second that. I feel like, um, I, I it was that that was 2022 West High Story, right? Um, I think it's 2022, yeah. I think it was, it was the year Denis Villeneuve was not nominated for Dune. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> again, again, Nolan pick Nolan. Picked the right year for this movie to come out, and and it, it, it was a fortunate the writer and actor strikes happened to push back Dune Part Two, mm -hmm. but it was in in benefit to Christopher Nolan to finally get that Oscar on his mantle for all the other awards he has on there already. It's it's definitely definitely going to be a Oppenheimer sort of night, for sure. So With, happy, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> and on that sentiment, we are now in. The best picture category with the nominees are American Fiction, Anatomy of the Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Mastro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, and The Zone of Interest. Now, before we get into our predictions, which I'm pretty sure we know what, what our predictions are, do you feel like as a movie fan, this is the only category in the Oscars where there are 10 nominees? Do you feel like that's at this point, is it too much of nominations for best picture? Or do you feel like the category itself allows it to have this many? It's been a stacked year for movies. Yeah, they they mm -hmm. totally deserve to be here. I would have swapped a couple movies here and there. Um, okay. I would have put, for example, either Spider-Verse or... Well, Nimona is one of my favorites, of course, but I don't <laughs> think that would have been likely here. But Across the Spider-Verse like, did have a shot here. I think the Society of the Snow should have gotten more love from, from the industry. But it totally justifies having it being 10 nominees. I think it should stay, and I, see, I think it should stay that way um, yeah. going forward. And it's, I think it's really the best year for movies ever since 2019. Mm hmm that's true because like you said there's a there was a couple movies i thought that you could also swap in in this category like you said spider-verse uh one movie i don't know if you saw called air with uh matt damon ben oh, affleck. i haven't seen I it i want to see it like, oh yeah it's i that's literally one of ben affleck's best directed movies in a long Whoa. time yeah and the story nice. on i think the story itself is so interesting on how the making of michael jordan's shoe for nike and just, okay. it's really, yeah, the really underdog story of where Nike was at that time, just being a 
you know, the third, the fourth best shoe company in America mm-hmm. and what it, the steps they took to get Michael Jordan to sign. And then we all know the end of the story now where Nike is. Mm-hmm. I thought, damn, that it's, it's hard to go against Ben Affleck because he usually, he usually puts out some really good performances uh, and, and directing performances as well because he directed it too. It's, I was really surprised that one did not get any, any attention throughout this award season probably because it came out like super early in the year but yeah and there was that no one, I, and no marketing too yeah that one because it is an it's an one of those amazon films those ones are hard to get the marketing on especially if they come out in march or april mm-hmm. but yes let's see i am again my love for the holdovers i think barbie had a fantastic year that no one saw coming killers of the flower moon <laughs> It's a, I, I wouldn't call it a Scorsese classic, but it, it is still a fantastic film, nonetheless. And Master Road, Bradley Cooper, Steven Spielberg produced. It's hard, hard, hard to see that being a bad one. But yeah, Oppenheimer <laughs> is def- definitely, definitely for the win. Everyone, everyone here, you're you're just participating. We're all here just to enjoy Oppenheimer get that Oscar. I don't think we're getting a Moonlight La La Land situation no. in this category. Will Smith is going to come up and slack anybody for getting the wrong categories in this one. Yeah, I think this is Oppenheimer's award to lose. It's not going to lose because it's going to win. And what, what do you think, Diego? Is this a slam dunk Oppenheimer? It's a slam dunk. It's a huge... It's one of the biggest slam dunks in Oscars in years. Yep. Like... like mentioned before i think it's gonna be the biggest sleep since lord of the rings return of the king mm-hmm. and i mean it's won every major award in best picture in the golden globes the critics choice pga song yep. ensemble that is like the equivalent of best picture uh everything everything um it would be the one of the biggest upsets if oppenheimer didn't win somehow oh, yeah. it would be it would be huge i i only see it like losing if if either the only scenario if of Oppenheimer losing is if either the holdovers win screenplay and that gives Paul Giamatti best actor and then completing it package with best picture right or best adapted screenplay for poor things and so mm. Emma Stone wins and best actress and best picture goes to poor uh to poor things the, the, the reason why I say this is because there's been a pattern in past years that the screen, like the screenplay award, usually goes in fact with with best picture, and it's even more right. reinforced with the best actor, either actor or actress. Mm-hmm. And you know the, the non Oppenheimer actors that have also like a lot of steam to win with best screenplay are. Paul Giamatti and the holdovers and Emma Stone and poor things. So that's right. the only scenario in which I could see Oppenheimer losing, but it's very, very, very unlikely. Absolutely. And it's really interesting how you were able you're able to pinpoint on how how the Oscars kind of work, especially past years. If this if this happens for this category, it's it's gonna trickle down later on throughout the awards show. So that's that's yes. something that we're gonna keep our eyes on, especially for the best adapted screenplay. I, if Oppenheimer doesn't win that, that could really shake some things around. I think it really can, especially. Yeah. I mean, last year, everything everywhere won screenplay, mm-hmm. and it yeah. wasn't really in the talks to win best screenplay. And so that came with the package of Michelle Yeoh and Kate mm-hmm. Kwan and Jamie Lee Curtis. Here, here we go, and and with yeah. best director and best picture. Here's, and that's the thing: like best director doesn't necessarily equal. Best picture. They're going yeah. to best picture. There have been splits. You know, mm-hmm. one of the one of the most famous ones was um, Saving Private Ryan versus Shakespeare in Love. Yeah. Oh my Steven god. Spielberg yes. won, and mm-hmm. Shakespeare in Love swept with seven Oscars, including best picture. Yep. That was and one of the biggest upsets. And uh, La La Land versus Moonlight. La La Land mm-hmm. won six Oscars. It was the most wins in that year. But Moonlight won what? First adapted screenplay, best supporting actor with Maharshal yeah. Ali, Ali, best picture. Best picture. Yep. That that 
It all it literally all mends up. It really does. There's no conspiracy board that we got here. It really <laughs> the the math is there. The math is there. It, it, it's hard to go against that. And it's it and speaking of like those kind of split years when it comes to our director and best picture. I do remember one year where again going about mm-hmm. on Ben Affleck, where he wasn't nominated for best director in 2013 for Argo, but won best picture. And I I thought he he had the best directing performance out of that category. Yes, he 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 directed the hell out of Argo, and it yeah, was and also I, super I mean, surprising. Yeah, and not even getting nominated in that that it's. I think weird. we're going to see more Ben. Yeah, it's really weird because he. I think he won like the award for best director for the director's show somewhere in that year, but. Yeah, th- this again. This is a this was a stacked year in film. Just as great surprises that we got all around. Some surprises we were not expecting, but just the absolute enjoyment of film that us film fans are just yeah. being showered with. And it's amazing. So it's it's pretty much going to be an Oppenheimer kind of night. And before we kind of wrap everything up here, Diego, what's kind of what's been some of the movies this year? Yeah, you kept your eye on seeing that it's going to have some. Award show attention coming next year. Awards attention. Okay, the camera. Okay, <laughs> I was getting <laughs> on focus for a sec. Um, I feel like Dune Part Two is going to be a huge contender for many things. I haven't seen oh, the movie. Yeah. I'm very looking forward to it. But text alone, like, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a huge contender. And considering okay. how Dune Part One won six Oscars, was nominated for ten. And mm-hmm. it wasn't even that universally acclaimed for, from it critics. It really wasn't. It, this one is getting so much acclaim for, from so many people. Uh, I feel like Dune Part 2 is going to be a huge one. Um, maybe, maybe, um, it's hard to tell for prequels and sequels because mm. Furiosa is a, is a prequel, right? Yeah, Furiosa. Mm-hmm. And the thing is that it's George Miller directing again, and I think he's gonna pull a hell out of, of a performance from both Crimson Hemsworth and mm-hmm. Anya Taylor Joy. But I wonder if that movie is gonna get attention at the Oscars, considering it's like, hey, it's like the prequel movie. So I, I would, I'm really rooting for that movie to to be good and to do well. So maybe tech awards at least. Um, oh, yeah. And also, also one of the big movies is um, Joker Two. Joker Part Two, yeah. Joker Part Two. Um, Joaquin Phoenix. If Joaquin Phoenix said yes to a sequel, it's because it's something special. That's true. That is true. And it's Lady Gaga. Yeah. It's with Lady Gaga, who mm-hmm. gave a hell of a performance with A Star Is Born. She was by far the best part of a, a House of Gucci, which was not mm-hmm. the best movie but she no. really <laughs> held the movie together for me um oh, yeah. and just consi- like seeing lady gaga's career the crazy career i feel like she's gonna nail harley quinn if if there's oh, one yeah. performance i'm really looking forward to this year is lady gaga's harley quinn like watch out for that because she might bring something very very special margot robbie as harley quinn outstanding but lady gaga m- might just give something different that the Oscars that that the industry might like Mm -hmm. on in a different kind of way. Um, There are also some movies that um, I don't the things that that they have been pushed. I was really looking forward to Bong Joon-ho's Mickey movie with Robert Pattinson, but that was pushed for next year. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, mm -hmm. There there is a couple. Uh, There is one Coven Kevin Costner movie coming out later this year. I'm trying to remember the title. I believe it's called Amer- Horizon. It's called a Horizon. Mm. Okay. Kevin Costner coming back to direct. I think it's something that's been missed. I think he hardly okay. ever misses when he's directing. Is um, especially a western. Kevin Costner westerns bring me back to the days of. Oh man, what was that one western he was in? Besides Tombstone. Besides Tombstone. I know people are gonna say Tombstone. Tombstone. Um, uh, Dances, Dances with Wolves. Dances, Dances with, with Wolves. Wolves. He won with that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favorite movies of all time, Dances with Wolves. Oh, wow. Okay, nice. Yeah. So seeing see him come, come back to the director's chair to do this, again, another Western cowboy-style movie with Horizon, a two-parter. We're getting two parts in, 
this year, one in June, one in August. So that's going to be really interesting to see what kind of story he's going to tell. Because I yes. think he's also a great storyteller as well. So Horizons one, I'm definitely looking looking forward to the most this year. Uh, there, there is one, there is one with Zendaya. I believe it's called. Let me. I just Challengers. Challengers. Yes. I when I saw that trailer, I thought, "Ooh, this is an interesting kind of take she's going with." I am very much intrigued by this kind of love triangle mixed with the tennis aspect around it as well. And that movie is directed by Luca Guadagnino, isn't it? Yes, he also directed Call Me by Your Name. I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. if that was a good movie and it was a contender for for I would love to see Zendaya like really growing as an actress. Like oh yeah, like I think she is the best part of Euphoria, for example, in that show. Mm -hmm. She kills it in that role. And I'm also really looking, yeah, I'm very I I forgot about that movie. I'm really looking forward to that one as well. Absolutely. And and of course, we're getting we're getting Gladiator 2, Ridley Scott coming back yes, to direct this right. one. I Listen, I I love Ridley Scott. Gladiator is one of the greats all time. Do we need this? Do we need a sequel of Gladiator 2? I don't know. If there's a story to tell, I can't wait to see it. I'm, I'm very much interested to know what kind of more of the mythos they're bringing out, especially in this Gladiator world. What do you, what do you think, Diego? Do you have hopes for Gladiator 2? I have hopes. I mean, Gladiator is also one of my favorite Ridley Scott mm -hmm. movies. It's also one of my favorite movies of all time. I think that's... Russell Crowe and Joaquin Phoenix in that movie are electric yep. in that movie, mm -hmm. and uh, and the score in that movie is like that's oh. one of Hans Zimmer's best. Absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, the thing is that Ridley Scott as a filmmaker, it's kind of hit and it, miss lately. Yeah, it's it really because has been. It's the last duel was incredible. I thought that was mm. great movie. Beautiful. It mm -hmm. didn't get any recognition. <laughs> um, but then he came up with House of Gucci, <laughs> which was a very <laughs> weird. I I don't know what happened with the editing in that movie, for example. Yeah. Um, we just had Napoleon. him with. I was gonna say yeah, N Napoleon. Trailer wise, I had so much anticipation for it. It came out of CinemaCon with this with the praise and rave behind it. It was gonna be really Scott's best uh, direction in years and. Yeah, the the movie really fell flat. I thought I thought okay. some scenes were were just jumbled all over the place. Okay, uh, not not one of Joaquin's best performances, I would say. And it's huh. yeah, I would definitely say not one of his best. Vanessa Kirby uh, was by far one of the best parts in that movie. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to her in Fantastic Four. By the way, that's another topic. Oh. But I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> um, it's so interesting. Yes, I, I I have hopes for Gladiator too, because that's like, it, I think if he if he's doing a sequel, I think I, I'm trusting that he has a story worth to tell in the second one. Um, and considering it's also, it's it's gonna be with Paul Mescal, right? Yeah, Paul Mescal, Denzel Washington in it as well. Pedro Pascal, I think, is in this one. I I think. Yeah. No. Yeah. Pedro Pascal too. Mm -hmm. And Pedro Pascal, like, uh, he picks very very good projects. So, I I have hopes. I I don't want to get too excited just because of Gladiator is one of my favorite movies of, of all time. Mm -hmm. But I do have hopes that it's that's like at least a good a good movie. Yeah. Yeah, same here, man. We're hope we're hoping, we're praying. Hopefully, it delivers. Hopefully, we're talking about Gladiator two next year when it comes around the Oscar season. Oh, man, Dago, thank you so much for joining me. This was such a fun time geeking out, talking movies with you, getting the predictions on this year's Oscars. If anyone wants to look you up and find your reactions, your thoughts, and everything like that, where can where can the beautiful, lovely, gorgeous individuals find you at? Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, you can find me on YouTube as Darky. I do reactions, commentaries, uh, all first time watching to uh, TV shows and movies. And uh, it's all animation. All of it is animation. And right now I'm reacting to, I'm currently uh, finishing Shira. I'm also oh. reacting to, yes, it's going to be the end of season five. And uh, reacting also to Hasbun Hotel, to The Yowl House, to. Uh, Murder Drones, I've also reacted to Arcane, to Legend of Korra, huge fan of animation. And there are a couple of movie reactions uh, there as well. So, yeah, let's hope you can 
see something that you like and you might join the family <laughs> over there uh thank you thank you so much sam it has been such a fun time uh talking with you about movies i really love this kind of conversation and i'm so so looking forward to see what happens at the oscars and what movie is gonna what's gonna be like some of the biggest movies this year absolutely absolutely make sure you guys go over to his channel he's got a lot on the play a lot of things are cooking up it's gonna be great to see i can't wait to see his reactions there are some that are so great to watch some of the best editing I have to say, some of the best editing you will ever you will see on YouTube, hands down. And if you guys want to follow me on my socials, just go to Twitter at SamMac55, same on TikTok, Instagram, SamMacias5, Facebook, SamMacias, and here on YouTube as well. I do reactions as well for um, not movies yet. I'm I'm still I'm still a baby in this, not movies yet, but for shows like Hasman Hotel, Percy Jackson, I do also reactions to some videos out there for sports and all that in between and more. I also do interviews. I interviewed Diego some time ago. It was a great conversation learning about him, his background, and everything in between. And I can't wait to talk to him again in the future. It's such a great time. Make sure you guys hit, hit that like, subscribe button to my channel, Sammy C's. Go over to Diego's channel as well. Show some love, support his way. He, he knows it. He earns it. He deserves it. And so it's great. And until next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye.